Now let's uh, look at uh, the computation of the market price of risk. And uh, here uh, we know the definition of the market price of risk. The market price of risk is uh, coming out as the expected return minus the risk free rate of return uh, divided by the standard deviation of the return. That is what is the market price of the risk. So whether I am using as a portfolio or if I am using a security, when I am looking at the market price, I am looking at the expected return minus the risk free rate of return divided by the standard deviation of the returns. And what we are able to see here is uh, if this is the kind of a return 5% in all possibilities, then probably I could take it as a risk free rate of return directly. So asset one, I can directly take it as a risk free rate of a risk free asset, which means the return that is coming on that risk free asset is what I'm taking as a risk free rate of return. And uh, I'm investing the market capitalization is something like this for these remaining two, which means my investments also would be in a similar proportions in asset two and asset three, if the CAPM has to typically hold true. So I could uh, take this into a spreadsheet to really compute the market price of risk. Okay, I will take uh, the states. If I'm assuming that uh, in four states, the probabilities are 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and 0 0.4. These are the probabilities. And uh, asset 1 I will not consider because I have taken it already as a risk-free asset. So fair enough because I want to find out the market price of risk. I don't need to include that as a part of my portfolio. I am going with uh, the possibilities 5% uh, in this, 12% in this, 3% in this, and 1% uh, in this scenario. Whereas when I am talking of asset 3, 6, 5, 4, 7, 6%, 5%, 4%, and 7%. These are the possibilities. So what we are saying is the expected return, right? Now, and now we know that uh, a portfolio is created. Uh, if the market value is uh, here, the market capitalization 17,546. Whereas here the market capitalization, I'm not looking at it as a percentage 17,546. And here I am looking at 82,454. I don't need this as a percentage again. So 82,454 is the kind of uh, value in this. So if I am holding a market portfolio, then the weightages for me should be the weightage for me should be uh, this divided by this plus this should be the investment in the first one which is around 17.5% whereas the remaining should be the investment in the second one. So 82.45% is the kind of an investment in the second. 17.55% is the investment in the first one and 82.45% is the investment in the second one. So, assuming that those are the investments, so what are the possible uh, returns that are going to uh, come out uh, on the portfolio, return on the portfolios here, it is coming out to 17.55% times the 5% plus 82.45% times the 6%. So overall giving me uh, these are the possible uh, returns that are going to come up in all these uh, situations and I could multiply the return by the probabilities 
to typically uh, get the overall expected return of the portfolio. So getting the expected return, computing the expected return of the portfolio comes out as the summation of all these which will work out to around 5.79%. So, 5.79% will become the expected return of the portfolio. Okay. So, I'll write the expected return of the portfolio is going to be 5.79%. Now, when I want to uh, find out the variance of this particular portfolio, all we are saying is, See, variance, when I want to uh, go with uh, some W1 percentage in A plus the remaining W2 percentage in B, right, all that comes out is W1 squared, W1 squared, the variance of A plus W2 squared, the variance of B, plus 2W1, W2 covariance between A and B. That is what it should work out. And uh, what I am trying to uh, see is, or I could uh, very well uh, come out uh, with it uh, as, expectation of, a B minus expectation of A into expectation of B. I could take that. So expectations of A B, I could very well uh, uh, find it out. This times whatever uh, So, I could very well uh, find out expectation of AB. This has worked out to expectation of AB itself. So, expectation of AB minus... Uh, so, these returns, I will subtract these. So, which will give me the, uh, the variances now. So, probably uh, to compute the variance, I am taking... Uh, probably this I am... Uh, calling return of the portfolio minus average return square. Return of the portfolio minus the average return square is something that I am trying to find out. So, which will come out as this number minus this squared, right? Probably if this is going to be some x, I am going to do it as <coughs> x times the probability, which will work out to this number multiplied by the corresponding probability, giving out these kind of numbers for me. And overall, it comes out that the variance of the portfolio is going to be, the expected variance is going to be something like this, which is the summation. So, this is what is going to be the expected variance of the portfolio. And from there, if I am finding out the standard deviation for the same, where I will be taking the square root of the variance. So, resulting in this being the standard deviation. The so standard deviation, I can very well take it in the percentage form 0.67%. And uh, we have got into the mechanism of uh, computation of market price of this, which will come out as the expected value minus the risk-free rate. In this case, I am taking the risk-free rate directly 
as 5% because uh, that was uh, seen as the returns of one of the assets with all probabilities. So, because this is the asset with all probabilities giving the same uh, return, I can take very well this particular 5% as the risk free rate. So, from here, I can find the market price of risk which comes out as the expected return minus the risk free rate of return divided by the standard deviation which is working out to 1.179 or probably I could convert it into percentage form and say around 118% is the market price of the risk. So this is how we can uh, find out the market price of uh, risk that is associated uh, with a kind of a portfolio uh, under the assumption that the CAPM is holding true. Alright.